Hi, welcome to Salute TV, and I'm here with uh, Buzz Aldrin. Uh, it's great to meet you, sir. Uh, it's, it, it's truly an honor. Thank you. Always nice to be here, having an interview with brilliant people, well, redheads you. especially. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so the first question I wanted to ask you was, uh, so you spent uh, quite a bit of time in, in your young life uh, in the Air Force. Yes. And uh, as an Air Force pilot, pilot in Korea. And I was curious, um, what what were some of the key lessons that, that you learned while in the Air Force that have uh, uh, that you've used in the rest of your life? Uh, well, there's kind of a famous statement uh, or observation by fighter pilots, and it is uh, check six. That means look behind you at six o'clock because that's not where you want the enemy to be. <laughs> so if you're a wingman, you're protecting your lead. Uh, I guess that sort of means uh, be aware of the pitfalls and who's out to get you, maybe, or what you need to uh, overcome to achieve your objectives. That makes sense. Uh, so one of the things that you're most noted for is being one of the first individuals on the moon. What is one aspect of space travel that m m would you say would be the most interesting that most people would not know about? The, uh, the view when you first see it is uh, really fantastic, especially for those that haven't been uh, in uh, the freedom of aircraft at fairly high altitude. If you just look outside the window, it's it's sort of, uh, I mean, I'm always doing that. Everybody else is reading a newspaper or something, <clears throat> watching TV, but I'm always looking out the window because I'm fascinated uh, with the land formations and the civilization down there. And I can't understand why other people aren't either. Uh, you got a window. <laughs> uh, and, and I think the, uh, the opportunity to have a, a grasp on where we sit, where we are in the universe, and uh, as individual in some motion, uh, it's always a good idea to know sort of what that is. Um, there's an observation that a number of us has, have made, and that is a lot of people in their first uh, time in orbit, uh, as they begin floating around, they get to feel a little uncomfortable, maybe a little dizzy, uh, nauseous. I can't describe it because I'm not one of those. And it seems to be about 50-50, uh, and um, without going into the details, if you have a really good sense of direction here, you're in trouble up there. If you're kind of somebody who gets lost down here, you're kind of fat, dumb, and happy. You take whatever is around, and you feel good about it. Um, and it is a good idea to sort of have an idea uh, going en route from the Earth to the moon to uh, have an idea for, uh, for what the uh, Earth-Moon plane is. Um, things are pretty well oriented. Of course, anybody that is <clears throat> going into space in the early days <clears throat> had to really know the positions of the stars so we spend an awful lot of time in planetariums. And uh, after a while, you can forget a lot of that, though. So Sue so just talked about uh, back in uh, the way space was back then. So one of the things that you've done to really uh, to inspire space travel and space exploration is you have, uh, you have started the, the Share Space Foundation. 
uh, it's a it's a is it a stem it's a stem program that I uh, that inspires young individuals to carry out uh, space travel space exploration ideas and and I was wondering that isn't the way it was formed that was not the way it was formed. no share space <clears throat> there was uh, a time when people were thinking about the cargo bay and the shuttle, it's got a lot of room in it. Uh, people were thinking, gee, we could put a lot of adventure travelers, tourists. I'm coming up with a new term, I think now, a space passenger is a little bit more active and a space passenger for suborbital, for orbital or other activities. Uh, now, uh, how are we going to pick these people? And some wise guy in the back of the room said, uh, hey, why don't you have a lottery? Oh, man, that one really struck me uh, as great not to make money, but to spread around the interest amongst lots of people. And that's where share space came from, to share space with a large number of people and you could uh, think of a chance or a lottery ticket as a share. Uh, so that's where, where it all came from. Now, after the X Prize uh, introduction of uh, uh, private activities uh, into orbit, it was pretty damn slow. Things were not happening, so this idea sort of... Uh, uh, gave way a bit. There was one company, uh, x -Corps, that doesn't exist anymore. Man, they had a great way of uh, reaching international people with a big company, Unilever. They would go out to different uh, countries and sort of guarantee them one person or uh, one winner out of two or three. <clears throat> and the larger companies or larger countries uh, didn't get a big amount because we're encouraging. Uh, uh, and, of course, it uh, uh, costs more to uh, to apply. Well, they, they had a really good program. I don't want to go into it, but unfortunately their uh, finances uh, didn't work out too well, uh, even though it was a really good progressive program. But they had a big company that was international behind them, and I decided that uh, I didn't quite have that, so maybe the idea uh, would uh, be better adapted to encourage uh, people to share space thoughts and education at the higher levels in high schools and going to college. But scholarships uh, take a lot of money behind them, and there are a lot of them, and uh, most of the people who get scholarships are going to succeed in what they do anyway, with an exception of uh, Horatio Alger, which picks disadvantaged people who uh, have been able to overcome. And these are the people that, that are then given. Uh, so anyway, I, I moved down to the younger generations. <clears throat> and uh, now that... Uh, Jeff Bezos and suborbital flight with New Shepard uh, rocket is uh, on the horizon. All the uh, uh, nonprofit funds of share space uh, will not be inspiring game changers of the future. There are thousands of people that can do that. I'm the game changer of the present and resources that I'm involved in should be promoting that game changing that I can do, and then that will inspire people just like uh, the early space programs did. And that's where all the efforts that I'm able to uh, grab hold of or get to help me, that's where that should be. Well, thank you very much, sir, for coming in. And uh, once again, I very much hope that we have a wonderful 
uh, crowd tonight who can really cheer you on. So thank you very much. Uh, come back to Slew TV next time. Thank you.